In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to create this neon looping triangle background. Welcome back everyone, hope you're doing well. If you're new to the channel, my name is Sean Gonsalves and this is Animation Deconstructed. Now in this tutorial, we're gonna jump into Illustrator to create the texture and then we'll jump into After Effects and create the entire animation there. So inside Illustrator, we're going to create this background here, which we'll use in After Effects to actually break up the background. All I'm going to do is come to File, New, under the Film and Video, we'll choose the 1920 by 1080p, go Create, Come over to the properties and just turn off the transparency grid and then in order to draw our triangles we're going to come over to the rectangle tool hold down go over to the polygon tool and then just click once and you'll see this little pop and we'll change this to three sides I'm going to press ok and then just scale this up pressing the v key or coming over to your pointer tool i'm going to drag this over and then i'm going to duplicate this across just by holding shift and alt and it should snap and then i'll control d until it goes all the way across now I want about eight of these and then I'll select all of them and just holding shift, just pull it down until it snaps. Next thing I'm going to do is holding control and alt. So I'm going to pull this down until it snaps. Let's move this over until it comes to about here. We just need one more of these. So click and drag and that'll snap there. Select all of them, pull down until it snaps and then control D just once more. I'm going to select everything and let's just uh, take the stroke off. So come over here or down at the bottom here, turn the stroke off. I'm going to make this black for now. Then I'm going to bring it up so you can see it. And I actually want this to be white on a black background. And this is because the effect that we're going to use in After Effects, we will set the white to be static and the black parts to actually break off. So let's do that. Just come over to the layers area. We're going to press plus, go over to the polygon tool, select the rectangle tool, and we'll just draw a rectangle here and then make this black and drop this layer down. Just pull it down and release. Then we're going to lock this and you don't need to worry about renaming these. What we're going to do in order to create these triangles, which look like this a bit more displaced is we'll just select this white pointer tool and then if you just click in the black area and drag you'll be able to select these points and just move them and you'll do this right throughout i'm not going to waste your time by actually going in and doing all these in the tutorial we're going to fast forward and just move to this one once you've got something that you like you're going to go over to file going to export and export for screens and then just select the one that is necessary and leave it to one times and just export the artboard uh, make sure that you've placed it in a folder that you like and it'll appear in a one times folder so we've got our illustrator document done we're going to import this into after effects and start with the animation so inside after effects we're going to bring in our triangular background we're going to double click in the project panel locate that artboard which we exported i'm going to import that then I'm going to drag it down into the Create Composition button. Let's press Control K so we can rename this. I'm going to call this Triangle BG. And then this is 1920 by 1080p, 30 frames per second. My duration is 10 seconds long. So if you need to change that, just adjust that. Press OK. And then if you did adjust that, you might need to just stretch this layer across until the end. Let's press the S key and then Shift R so that we have scale and rotation open. I'm going to drag this up, scale this. Mine is 117.6. And then I'm just going to zoom out slightly and rotate this forwards until about there. Just to add some more variance to the look and shape of this. Then I'm going to take this composition and I'm going to drop it onto the Create Composition button again and select it in the project panel press the enter key and let's call this pattern and then let's open this up we can hide this layer for now we're going to right click new and create a new solid not going to rename this for now but the color is important we're going to choose 090042 and press ok then come over to the effects and presets panel and just start typing shatter it's under simulation you can double click that and you'll get this kind of effect over here, which looks like bricks. Now at the moment it's set to wireframe and forces. And if we just drag forward, you'll see it kind of explodes the background forward into pieces. Now this is driven by the shapes that are actually selected. And in this example, you have the pattern, which is bricks, and you can change these to glass or anything else. We're going to actually use a custom and we're going to change the custom shadow map to point at our triangle. BG and you'll see that we can see this now. 
Let's just move forward slightly, change the wireframe to rendered, and you'll see we have quite a dark background. I'm going to come down to the lighting and the material and just adjust some things so we can see it better. Diffuse reflection, uh, take that down to zero, take up the specular reflection, it's about two, and then the highlight sharpness, maybe four, 4.4, and then I'm going to take the light intensity down and change the color of the light color to a bit of a blue so four five one aff if i turn on the transparency grid we should see something happening now i do want to lock the white tiles as you can see there's something strange happening where those tiles actually move as one piece so if we just take that on it should look a lot better then we're going to come over, just twirl these up for now. We'll adjust those a bit later. Let's go down to the physics. I want to take off the gravity mass variance. Let's say about 20% just to give some variance to these pieces. Viscosity zero and randomness zero. Let's also change the rotation speed. Let's take it up to about one. This will help as we slow down everything. We'll still get a bit of rotation in this background. In order to change how these are exploding and slow this down so that we actually have a background we can work with, I'm going to come over to the force. I'm going to change the strength to 0.008. Now if we move forward, we can see some cracks happening. And this is looking a lot better already. Let's change the depth of this to 0.45. Move forward again. And let's just adjust the radius of this. Let's say 0.7 and see how that looks. Now just note that when you're talking radius of this, this is a complete 3D circle. So think of a big ball coming to knock this background down. So as we expand it, it's going to expand forward as well. Now this is looking pretty good to me, so I'm going to adjust some of these shape settings. Let's take the extrusion depth down to zero. I don't really want to see any depth on them. And then I'm going to come down to the tumble axis and just change this to YZ. This is just a personal preference. You can actually leave it if you want to. Next thing I want to do is just make sure my lighting and my material are set to what I have in the example. So light depth 0.313 and then the ambient light is just 0.1. Next thing I want to do is actually just change the light position. So I'm going to click this button here and then move this off just about here so we're getting a darkened area. I'm also going to change the light type to a point source and we'll get this little spotlight which will move across our background. Let's come over to the force one. I'm actually going to use both forces. At the moment if I drop this down you'll see the radius of this force two is zero so that's why it's not actually affecting our background at the moment. But I do want to move this to the left so somewhere around here and then I'm going to just copy over these settings so 0 0.45 let's say 0 0.7 and 0 0.0.08 and I'm going to move this off to the right just about there and then we can adjust a few things let's change the depth to 0 0.1 and then the strength of this to 0 0.015 and that should be pretty good now the last thing I want to do is actually animate this light moving around. Our animation is actually going to happen from let's say about two seconds to about five seconds. I'm going to just deselect everything, press the star key so we add a little marker there and then move it over to five, add another marker there and this will just help us time remap this in a new comp. I'm going to also change my working area and just pull that in and then I'm going to right click new null object I'm going to move this over press the p key let's keyframe that move over to two seconds so i was at five seconds ready keyframe that there and then i'm going to move this over to about here at about three seconds and i'll just move this down move that down come over to five seconds let's just copy and paste the first frame and then just adjust these handles slightly Select all these keyframes, control click until you get round circles. And this means it's going to be a smooth transition no matter what. And then I'm just going to just adjust this slightly. So it's a small circle around. Next thing I want to do is select the shadow layer, come down to lighting, alt click the light position, and then you'll come over to this little twirl over here, which is a pick whip. You'll hold it, drag up to the position and let go. Then with the selected, you can click anywhere and it will be linked. Now you can see if we just drag forwards and backwards, our light is actually moving backwards and forwards. Now that we've got our triangular background set up, we need to create the loop 
and bring in our light rays and then add this neon look to it. Okay, so we've got our pattern actually done now. So I'm going to take that pattern, I'm going to drop it onto a create composition. Let's select that new composition, rename it to triangle looping BG, press OK, it should be open for us. And you'll see that our time markers are there already. So I'm going to right click this, go to time, enable time remapping, come over to two seconds, let's just add a keyframe, add another keyframe at five, and then click on the time remap word, it'll select all these, and then just shift and deselect these and press the delete key, then select both these, move them to the beginning, and then at six seconds, let's copy that first frame and paste it, and select these and just press the F9 key so that it easy eases, and then alt click on the stopwatch, and start typing loop with a small L and then out. And then you'll see this pop up over here. Just double click that and click out of everything and it should confirm your selection. And then if we just press play, we should get a looping background. Just drop this to a third so that it's not too slow. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna take this up to full again so that we can see our effects happening. I'll we'll move over to about two seconds. I'm going to twirl up everything and control D to duplicate. Then I'm going to control shift C and we'll call this grunge. So we pre-composing this, I'm going to move all attributes into the new composition, press OK. I'm going to recolor this so we know what it is. Double click to come in here. I'm going to right click new solid and call this grunge. Press OK, don't worry about the color right now. We'll add an effect. So come over to effects and presets, type in fractal. And coming down to fractal noise. Let's adjust a few things. So contrast, let's take that up to, let's say 370. And brightness, maybe slightly up. Two is plenty on this. Complexity, let's take that down to three. And then I just want to change the transform. Drag down on this, say about 40. And then I want to just animate this. So let's drop down the evolution options. Tick on the cycle evolution so we can make this loopable. I'm going to turn on the stopwatch at zero, press the U key, come over to about three seconds. Our loop in the pattern is six seconds long, so I'll have this at three seconds, then it will be a perfect loop when it gets to six seconds again. So let's do one revolution. I'm going to alt click on the stopwatch and we're going to type in loop just like we had before. You can see it's over here, loop out, double click that, click anywhere and it'll confirm and you'll see that this will just cycle through all the way till the end. Let's twirl this up, drop this below our pattern, and then I'm going to select alpha inverted mat. I'm going to close this, go back to our main composition, I'm going to select the grunge layer, control D to duplicate, and I just want to make a bit of a change to this pattern at the back, so select it, come over to effects and presets, and let's add a levels. So type in LEVE, -E, double click, and I just want to drag down on the gamma. I just wanted to make it a bit darker so that our rays will shine a lot better. Selecting the top grunge, let's add a glow to this. So type in glow, take the threshold down. I think that's okay. Glow radius, let's take this up. Let's say about 22. And then I want to use colors instead of the white and black. So let's go to the original colors, select A and B colors, and we can specify it's a pink color here, FF00, F6, press OK. Then with the black, let's spot that again. You'll see we start getting this pink kind of glow to this. Now I'm going to change this grunge layer to additive, just so I can see what's happening here. And then I'm going to duplicate this glow. And let's just adjust a few things. So radius, let's take this up. We want 40 and the glow intensity one. I'm going to come to the top here with the glow intensity and just pull this down slightly. So about 0.6, I just wanted a bit tighter over there and the softer glow on the outside. The softer glow is the second glow, which is a lot bigger. Next, I'm going to duplicate this grunge layer again. I'm going to delete one of these glows and let's just adjust this. Let's pull this back. This is going to drive our actual rays. So 26 on the threshold. Let's uh, make this glow radius 18, glow intensity to really take this up. So I don't know, 7.4 looks a bit ugly right now, but we will change a few things here. I'm going to change the color B to black and this will soften that immediately, but it will still allow us to get some really good rays out of this pink. I'm going to come over to the effects and presets panel. 
gonna type in CC radio. You want the CC radial blur, not the fast blur. Let's double click that. I'm going to take the center, just click on it and let's move over to the left. Somewhere where our light is happening, our light is positioned. Go over to the type, I'm going to say fading zoom, and then I'm going to change the amount and let's drag this right up. So I've got 250 over there. I'm going to move this a bit more to the left. And initially you'll see that these rays are pretty detailed and I like it to be a lot softer. So I'm going to come up to effects and presets. Let's type in levels. Let's first pump it up a bit. Double click. Let's go over to the alpha. And I'm going to pull back on this white to about 128. You can see that at the bottom there. And then the gamma. Let's play with that slightly as Pull it forward so your gamma can be about 0.98 you'll see these rays really start shining we can just pull that up last thing i want to do is actually add a gaussian blur so come over and type gaussian blur so g-a-u-s and you should see it pop up here don't use the legacy let's take the blurriness right up say 35 and these are looking a lot softer now these rays are a bit bright, so I'm going to come over to the layer, press the T key for opacity, and let's just take this down to see what 60% is like. Now to finish off this effect, I'm going to right click, new, create an adjustment layer, and I'm going to add another levels. I just want to crunch some of these colors down. I'm going to double click on that and just I'm going to pull forward, and this will darken everything or just add some more contrast to this. So if you want to follow along, let's say about 0.96. And then I'm going to add some noise to this. So type in noise. You want this noise HLS auto. So we'll just add some grunge matter to this and just take away any kind of banding that happens in your render. Let's go over to the hue. Let's type in one. And I just want to slow down the animation speed to one as well. So we don't really see it. I'm going to give this one preview. I'm going to just change my work area to six seconds. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to see more videos like this, take a look at either of the two videos popping up on the screen right now. Keep animating and until next time.